Hey guys, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you whatever I've been up to in the craft room this week, whether I've only put a couple stitches into a hat, or I've actually spent all weekend working on some quilt projects. Here's a bit of a close-up look at the Drunkard's Path. Can you see how it has, like, the ears of the bat and the wings right here? Yeah, so I was thinking definitely wanted to keep it at the back of my mind to work on a an orange and black one soon to make at least just one or two bats on it for a nice little wall hanging nothing really big maybe a table runner or something i'll have to play with how the blocks line up because as you can see they go on a diagonal see how i can turn them to make it work in a way that i would like so this is a 39 inches wide by 46 inches long i'm as I stated yesterday in the Talk To Me Tuesday video, I'm going to look and see if I have enough more of this fabric to make one more row of blocks down the side, just to make it a little bit larger. That'll put it about 45, 46 inches wide maybe. So then it'll become more of a square. And then if I want to add borders, I can add some borders, but I think at 46 by 46 or so, that'll be big enough for a nice little lap quilt and that'll be good for me. And then I will call this one done. And then I'll probably go ahead and just do the binding in the black because if I do have any more of this fabric, I will be using it for blocks and I won't have enough for the bindings. So I think just black around the binding will be fine. And the other crafty quilty thing that I worked on were these little minis. It's a little hard to see in this version, so I'm gonna put it a little sideways here. I guess you can hang them on the wall any way you like. So there is one. And two. And number three. I really like this design. I like it a lot when you use a, a more of a darker color. For instance, I used a cream here because I thought it would show off these colors nicer. I didn't want to use a black because I had already had these two colors that had a black background and I didn't want to lose them with the black inside this color right here. So I thought, well, I'll go ahead and use this cream that I have because I don't use cream that much anyways. So I thought, well, let me go ahead and just play with the cream a little bit. And then that way all these dark colors will pop nicely against it. And then I'll either do, well, one of them, I've decided one of them, I'm gonna micro stipple and just make a whole bunch of little free motion quilting in here. That'll compact this cream section down and it'll allow these colors to pop. I might just go ahead and do a stitch in the ditch around here just to make sure that they do pop nicely and then fill it all in with that micro stippling. I haven't tried the pebble quilting yet and I really don't think I want to try it on this. I think it even a smaller quilt would be better because even at this side that is a lot of pebbles. The little micro stippling at least I can just kind of wiggle jiggle all the way around and it won't take that long to do these small ones. And then on one of them I also want to do the matchstick quilting and that's just where you do the straight lines. I'll follow this all along. And then really right next to it, about the width of a matchstick, you just kind of go back around. And then that'll just keep following these all around like that. Once again, doing a little stitch in the ditch just to hold this fabric stable there. And then here, and then you know, you just keep going around and around and that'll cause these colored fabrics to go ahead and pop nicely. So the way I did these is I started out with the four inch squares and it's a little Missouri Star Quilt Company trick that you take one fabric, you lay the other one right sides facing, and you just do a quarter inch seam all the way around all four sides. Then after it's all done, you mark it, you cut it with an X on both diagonals, and then when you're done, you'll end up with four of your half square triangles. You just have to be really careful because then you have bias edges everywhere. So I still have all of these that I can sew into half square triangles. And I have this stack of these. So I will probably, I, I wanna make two more of these little mini tops to go ahead and so that I can play with a little bit more quilting on it and then they can go in the shop. But if I have just the right amount to make a larger wall hanging, I might also do that. But I would like to just get two more out of it instead. But I'll have to find out and see how many uh, little half square triangles. It looks like I probably have enough here just to do one in itself. And then that would give me plenty for here. I might just make two and have them a little bit larger than the ones I've already made. Because with this design, you can just keep, it's like 
a pebble in a pond it could just keep echoing out and you just keep adding so you can easily put a whole new row here just by making it a point like in these spots and then this would just keep going out and up so anyways it's really easy to make one large quilt or make a bunch of little quilts and little blocks and put it together into a quilt I also had a chance that it was in May I'd finished working on the dragon stuff and I knew I wasn't gonna start back to the knitting until June 1st so I thought well I've got a little bit of time and it was a day that I didn't want to take Rob's quilt to the cancer center so I decided to take the snowman instead because I would really like to get this snowman finished up with his embroidery so he can be turned into a quilt So he's looking really cute. I finished the bottom of his jacket here and I'd hope to finish the birdhouse, but it does take quite a while. It was a fluid day, so we were only there for about two and a half hours, three hours. And not all of that time, as I've said, is it's not always stitching time. You have a lot of time where you're sitting in waiting rooms and waiting for his port to be accessed. And then when you go back into the actual fluid rehydration area, then I can sit down in a chair and pull out a project. So that usually takes a while before we get to that point. Plus all these little stitches do take a bit. So like I said, I finished down here and then I finished this section and I think I ended up using two or three lengths of floss. I think it was th three, not four, three lengths of floss. So that worked out nicely. And when I pick it back up, I'll just keep going through that. I wanna try to make sure I work on it at least one length of thread each week so that this can get done because we're already in June and I like to definitely have it done before we start getting into the winter because I have that Santa one that I want to work on this winter. I did hold up Rob's Afghan yesterday on Talk To Me Tuesday, so go back to yesterday if you haven't watched that video if you want to see what this looks like in the full length. I couldn't even hold it up. For me, it's definitely done. But for Rob, we need we figure he needs at least another foot, if not a little bit more. I have this small amount of red left that I want to go ahead and use up because there's no sense putting just this little bit back into the stash. Now let's see how much I actually got done this past week. So here's my marker. So I put about 12 rows into it. I thought that was pretty good because it's getting too hot at home now in the summertime to actually hold this on my lap, even with the air conditioning, because the time that I usually work on it is even into the evenings or sometime in the morning. But in the morning now, I prefer to go out and do some yard work before it gets way too hot in the day. So if I can get all my yard work done before 8 a.m., it's... It's already into the 80s by then, but it's not into the 90s. It doesn't have the heat index of 100 yet, so I can get more done without causing myself any type of heat exhaustion, which is always a good thing. So I can't work on this in the morning. I do all my chores. Like I said before, it gets too hot, whether even if it's the inside chores, sweeping, vacuum, and mopping, it's much easier to do it in the morning because even with the air conditioning on, it does get warm when you start moving around. But this is perfect for taking to the cancer center because they keep their AC down to about 64, 65 degrees. So I use this, I actually use this as a blanket now to cover my legs because it gets very cold in there. But I'm going to wear shorts because you can't wear jeans outside when it's 100 degrees out because it just, it takes a while for the AC in the car to get cool. And I once again don't want to pass out from the heat. So I wear shorts. But then once you get there, it's too cold to be wearing shorts. So this is the perfect thing to work on. When I'm done with this, I might just have to actually start bringing a little bit of a small quilt to cover my legs with so that I don't freeze to death. And I did pull out the knitting. I spent a lot of time quilting this week or sewing tops, I should say, that I haven't sat down to do too much knitting. But I did put a few rounds on. These are the fingerless mitts. I am working on the part that's gonna widen for the gusset right here for the thumb. Working on this part goes a little bit slower because I have to follow the charts to make sure I'm putting everything. If it was just straight stockinette knitting where it was just knit, 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 and it wasn't this ribbing, it's a lot easier to just go ahead and do it and keep track of it. But as I'm doing it, they're letting me know where to put my knits and stuff so that I can make sure I follow the pattern, 
see how it's starting to, to branch off this way that's where you're going to see this come off this way where all the rest of it's going to go like here and then this is going to branch off to the side so i need to make sure i'm paying attention and i'm putting all the knits where they need to be and all the pearls where they need to be because otherwise you'll be able to spot it with your eyes real quick if i make a mistake now i've brought the cowl back out also because when i need a knitting project that I don't have to think because I have to pay attention to the gloves. So that's a good when I'm sitting down at home and working at night. But this is a good for taking out on the go. Working with two strands of yarn at the same time while alternating rows, it does tend to get a little tangled. So let me find out where the beginning of the round is. It is looking nice. I like how this is more of a, a creamy tan color or a slightly gray color versus a white. I don't know if it's my eyes, but it seems a little hazy in here today. Okay, there you go. I've gone ahead and I put two rounds on it. Not that much to talk about, but I did pick it up and I said I would show you guys anything I work on throughout the week. So I have just really basically started the second round. But this is great for traveling because like I said, it's just knit, 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 and you don't have to pay attention except switching colors up. So that works out great when you want to take it somewhere to travel. So that's what's been happening in my craft room this week. What have you guys been up to? If you enjoy seeing videos like this, please go ahead and like the video and think about subscribing to my channel. And if you want to YouTube to let you know every time I put out a new video, go ahead and ring that little bell down there by the subscribe button. And YouTube will send you a notification on your YouTube page to say, hey, Robin's got a new video out. Come on and check it out. And if you're ever looking for me anywhere online, I have links down below in the description box to wherever you can find me. I also have links down to my Patreon page if anyone is interested in joining us over there and helping support my channel. These little minis are actually one of the rewards for one of the levels of my patrons. So if you're looking to receive some little quilts like this or some small different rewards, check out the tiers and see what's available for you. And a huge thank you to all my patrons for supporting me. And until next week, bye! These little minis are actually one of the rewards for one of the levels of my patrons. So if you're looking to receive some little quilts like this or some small different rewards, check out the tiers and see what's available for you. And a huge thank you to all my patrons for supporting me. And until next week, bye!